Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barbie here, here with your next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that points out unique data and how it points to the Rapture Resurrection event. And if you love watching for this, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more great content coming out that will greatly encourage you about our soon departure. Folks, in today's report, I'm going to show you something that I'm sure you've never seen before in relation to the upcoming April 8th eclipse on Nissan 1. But before I do that, I have to lay the groundwork for you so that way you will understand and receive this report properly. Now, some of you have seen this before. This might be review. Whatever your position is, just listen up. Did you know that the United States geographically is laid out exactly the same way as God's temple. That's right. Essentially, the United States of America is God's geo temple on the planet. And you will begin to understand why in a minute. And once you see how all this aligns with the American eclipses and how it's pointing to the rapture, resurrection, and the seven year tribulation, you are going to be really excited. So, with that being said, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is play for you a video that I made back in 2015 with my brother in the Lord, Pastor Larry Shelby. Many of you from the earlier days of my channel may have seen the videos I made with him. He's an incredible brother in the Lord, believes in the pre-tribulation rapture. This man is the man where I've got most of my sharpening from when the Bible says iron sharpens iron because we've been working together for over a decade in the steel mills. Just an incredible wealth of knowledge this man is. And we made a video talking about the geographic layout of America being the same as the layout of God's temple. And this whole teaching was actually originated with Perry Stone a long time ago. I cannot find that video of Perry Stone's teaching on this. But Larry knows the whole teaching here, so we just made an entirely new presentation of it. So if anybody knows Perry Stone, please share this video with them. Now what we're going to do is go through the first part of this presentation where Larry will explain how America is geographically set up as a temple of God. And then I'll get into how this all relates to the April 8th eclipse. Larry and I are here right now at the Hilton Garden Bay. I'm going to show you something that's going to absolutely blow your mind and what I'm going to talk about today is why is it that America, that the United States of America is so special in the eyes of God. Outside of the fact that in God we trust is on our money. Outside of the fact that our constitution is based on God. Oh, yeah. In our Pledge of Allegiance we say one nation under God that see the point at this country being singled out not above Israel but just being singled out as a good companion for Israel okay and the United States has also become the number one safe haven for the Jews all right Absolutely. Um, there are about six million Jews give or take on the earth three million are in Israel the other three million give or take are here in the United States with some spread out in some other countries but the majority of them are here. Basically, the United States of America is laid out as a physical, geographic tabernacle for God's people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say God's people and not just Jews, but all of God's people. And, and the reason that is, is because it's his plan for the end times. Uh, and, and by the way, the temple in Jerusalem was laid out exactly the same way as the tent it was just a more permanent structure right. but we want to use tabernacle because the tabernacle or the tent was a a more temporary structure we're gonna look at it two ways we're gonna look at it geographically and we're also gonna look at it historically this is a tabernacle it's not the permanent all right, some of you know where I'm going with this. United States is only going to be temporary. Something's about to happen here, guys. So now what we have is the the way the United States is led out. So everything that came on when, back in the, the times of the, the inception of this country, you had people coming over. Now, when, when they come over and, and immigrants come over, one of the first areas that they come into is New York. Uh, and New York Harbor 
okay so that's also shared by New York New Jersey whichever you want to 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 say but what happens is the remember I told you that the the tabernacle had an area and also did the temple as did the temple have an area called the court of Gentiles in other words anyone who was outside of the nationality of Israel okay any peoples could come in to that well what happens in America there's a, a, a thing that stands very tall Bob is it not that in New York Harbor with an inscription bring us your poor your tired your weary uh, whatever then that comes in welcoming immigrants into mm -hmm. this country people from all over the world come in into New York Gentiles essentially people who are non-Jews non-Israel comes in so look at look at how that parallels to the court of Gentiles in the tabernacle mm -hmm. they come from the the uh, into the east off of the east coast and I'm just gonna give some parallels that some are major some are minor yeah, so right. in the court of Gentiles also is coal for burning you need something to burn the sacrifice mm -hmm. and in the Pennsylvania uh, West Virginia the Virginia area is a lot of coal mines so that coal is used for the burning on the altar it's the, the sacrifice. So look at that geographically. Where do you get that from? All of that activity happens in the court of Gentiles. Mm. The burning of the sacrifice. Where do you get the, the coal or the, the fire to burn the sacrifice? Right there in the court of Gentiles. That is the sacrifice. One of the things that people have to acknowledge in becoming a citizen of the United States, uh, it's in the pledge that they have to denounce their country of origin and pledge to defend this country from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is the sacrifice. So now when you go off to, to the side a little, uh, coming in, is a laver mm -hmm. or a basin of water fresh water so this is what the priest used in the tabernacle and also the temple to wash their hands before they went to do the ceremonial ministry of the temple or the okay. tabernacle okay now that basin of water if you look at well it, it depends on how you it's all one thing but you're gonna get from the north, you have five great lakes that converge mm -hmm. into one another. Five being the number of grace. Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, Lake Erie, Lake Huron, and Lake Ontario. Okay. There's five great lakes. Okay. The largest bodies of fresh water in the world mm -hmm. resides within the continental United States of America. So here you have the freshest water in the world represented by the five great lakes and then here you have the freshest water represented in israel with the water basin here at the temple so now the outer court and the inner court or the court of gentiles and the sanctuary was divided off by a walled partition in in the tabernacle it was a wall made of fabric in the temple it was actually a mortar stone wall okay. so now this stretching from all the way from the upper part of the United States going all the way down to the south there is a partition a geographical partition known as the Mississippi River also just out of a, from a prophetic standpoint okay. so now you have this out of this fresh reservoir out of grace flows this water mm -hmm. five five lakes five being the number of grace out of lakes flows this great water this fresh water okay. so now one of the greatest prophets ezekiel saw in his vision a river running out from the altar running out under the temple and flowing out of the temple out into the wilderness okay. so now once on the other side of the partition of the tabernacle and later the temple so once you walk through the door of the temple uh, the same furniture that was in the tabernacle was also the same furniture used in the temple okay. now the furniture is important even in the geographic layout of the United States of America the next piece of furniture that you have is the seven fluted lampstand or the the, the great menorah this menorah 
was filled with oil. The greatest concentration of oil in the United States is in Texas and Oklahoma. So historically, when way back when, when they first discovered oil on this land of the United States, it was in Texas and mm -hmm. Oklahoma. They hit oil. Okay, so oil it helps burn and, and fuel the light of the temple, but it also fuels this country. The next piece of furniture we, we have, if you go north, there was a table. It's funny that it would be a table because it's a, a table is a platform or a, a slate, if you mm -hmm. will, platform or slate that, that is used to, to eat off of. This was where the priest laid the showbread, the flatbread that they ate from. Now, the Midwest, all those states that are known as the Midwest, in the Midwest, in this country, it's also known as the breadbasket of America. That's right. So look at the parallel, the breadbasket of America, the showbread in the temple or in the tabernacle mm -hmm. is right there in the Midwest. Then as you move further into the country, you have the last piece of furniture that was in the tabernacle. And that was the brazen altar, mm -hmm. the altar of incense. And what was on the altar of incense was coal and incense, fire. So this is where the priest would take the incense and the, the censer and fill it with the coals and let the smoke fill the temple, the fragrance and the smoke. So what we have in that part of the country is Utah, Mm -hmm. and surrounding states, which is known for its coal reserves, the greatest concentration of coal, all these coal mines. Mm -hmm. Th that coal is what represents the altar of incense. That's the last thing that the priest has before he goes into the holy place. That's so after that, after the coal, what do we have? Uh, uh, we try to move on into the most holy place. But before we get to that, we have a partition, mm. yet another partition that separates the sanctuary or the inner court from the holy of holies or the most holy place. The, the partition that is in the United States, the Rocky Mountain chain separates the inner court or the sanctuary from the Holy of Holies or the most holy place. The Rocky Mountain chain is that partition or is that veil. Now, I wanna point out that historically, uh, during the gold rush and during the uh, land rush of the 18, early 1800s, all the way up to the mid 1800s, many people tried to go out west and they always had a problem trying to cross the Rocky Mountains. Many people, many, many settlers died trying to cross over the Rocky Mountains, trying to get to the West. Mm. So there's that parallel of a dangerous, treacherous, or heavy weighted partition that was hard to cross. The reason it was hard to cross in the sanctuary because a, a priest had to be ceremonially prepared. In this country, you had to have all of your provisions. You had to have enough food. You had to have enough uh, stronger horses yeah, and, and all of this to cross over. So if you didn't have your stuff together, you nine times out of 10, you died right there trying to cross the, the and, mountains. Yeah. So after the veil, you have the Holy of Holies. Now the furniture that is in the Holy of Holies is the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. where God chose to use the ark to show his power through Israel and so the priests always carried this ark into battle they always said but the resting place of the ark resided in the tabernacle in the holy of holies and later on the temple which was also called the holy of holies in that place and then it had a, a what was called a mercy seat on it where the two cherubs rested on top to guard and oftentimes it was said that the presence of God hovered above the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. Remember what the Ark of the Covenant is made of. Two materials, wood and gold. Originally constructed, uh, so many cubits made of wood and then overlaid or plated 
gold. with pure gold. The biggest commodities in not only California and those surrounding states like Nevada, gold, but when they first got out there, the forest, trees, acres upon acres, hundreds of thousands of acres of woods and trees. Now what I'm gonna do is overlay the American eclipses over this picture I made, which is a rendition of God's Geo Temple America. And we'll see what we get. Now take a good look at this, folks. Take a look where the X's are. And before I go any further, to help us have a better understanding, I'm also gonna overlay the eclipses on top of the temple itself. Hmm, very interesting. Take a good look at this, folks. Now let's take both of them and put them side by side, and we'll go from there. Well, the first thing I notice is the X that takes place on April 8th between the two eclipses from 2017 and the eclipse from this year. And I'll tell you what, it's in a perfect spot because this X actually marks three different locations in the temple. First, the X is marking the outer court, the court of Gentiles. And I believe this is God's way of telling the world, hey, Daniel's 70th week is about to begin. And I say that because in the Bible, Revelation 11 verse 2 it says, But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, three and a half years. The first three and a half years of the tribulation, marked by this X on April 8th. And it doesn't stop there. I believe this is God signaling that the two witnesses are about to show up onto the scene. Two X's, two witnesses. Because if you go to the very next verse, Revelation 11 verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. The first three and a half years of the tribulation. So we see how this sign can be potentially marking the beginning of the 70 tribulation. And family, it just might be because if you take a look right here, starting this year on Purim, there will be a blood moon that falls on Purim every year for the next three years. We have this X showing up right on the outer court where the Gentiles will trample on it for the next three and a half years. And it's followed by three blood moons falling on Purim for the next three years. Family, can't make this stuff up. God is obviously warning us. And this may also be marking the time when the two witnesses will begin their three and a half year ministry as well. And guess where they're going to be preaching from? That's right, the court of Gentiles. This thing just keeps on giving. Now the next thing I noticed that's interesting about the X of this eclipse, it's near the water basin in the outer court where the high priest will wash their hands and clean themselves before performing their temple duties. And why is this significant? Because this represents the cleaning and purification process of Israel during Daniel's 70th week. That is why this X is near the water basin, signifying that this cleaning purification process is about to begin. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, how does all this tie into the rapture resurrection event when it comes to this water basin? In the Bible, a mass amount of people is referred to as a large body of water, a sea of people. Even Jesus said we all must be born again of the spirit and born again of the water. So collectively, the body of Christ is a sea of living water. So with that being said, look where the X is, right next to the water basin. What does that mean? I have a theory. Our born again spirits collectively represent a mass sea of living water, the body of Christ all over the earth. Holy living water, just like the water within that basin. So think about this. The body of Christ represents the living water here on the earth right now until the rapture resurrection takes place after that all of the living water represented in the body of christ will be gone which will be achieved through the rapture resurrection event 
And will April 8th be that day? I don't know, but it's very interesting what it says in Genesis 8.13. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, Nisan 1, which is coming up this April 8th, the waters were dried up from off the earth. Get that? From off the earth. Dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked. And behold, the face of the ground was dry. Interesting choice of words there. The face of the ground was dry. Will the face of the earth be dry here soon? After the rapture resurrection, the living water currently on the earth right now, represented by the body of Christ, is raptured, resurrected off the earth. The Bible indicates that there will be a famine of the word of God for a while after the rapture resurrection. Hardly any water to drink anywhere on the planet of the word of God for a while. I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure that day, but it's definitely a high watch day just for this reason. And then, if that's the case, eventually new water, a new way of being clean, will be introduced. Still based on Jesus' blood and his finished works at the cross, but a new gospel will accompany it. And that's represented in Revelation chapter 14, along with the preaching of the two witnesses and 144,000. It's the same Holy Spirit cleansing water, but now this water is only going to be applied to Israel. And Gentiles will be proselyted into the nation of Israel by being grafted in to the promises of Abraham at this point. By converting into Jews themselves, just like they used to do back in the old days before Paul's gospel. Now, notice the second X that forms over Texas. And if you look below, that same X forms over the position of the menorah. So here God is marking the position of the oil in the United States and the position of the oil in the temple. Now, why is this significant? Well, if you know the parable of the ten bridesmaids, five were wise, five were foolish. Five had extra oil, five did not. And how does that relate to us today? Those who have the extra oil, which is the indwelling Holy Spirit, born again, saved and sealed for the day of redemption, the rapture, resurrection, those who have that extra oil will be removed from the earth, the five wise bridesmaids, while the five foolish bridesmaids stay here and face the seven year tribulation. This is why God marked the water and the oil here. There is going to be a change of guard, a change of representation of the water and oil here on the earth. Right now, the body of Christ represents the water and the oil of Jesus Christ here on the earth. But after the rapture resurrection, and as Daniel's 70th week kicks off, there will be a new representation of the water and the oil here on the earth, the Holy Spirit, and that will be the two witnesses and 144,000, the tribulation saints. And another amazing thing about this is the water and the oil are marked here. And of course, Jesus turned water into wine. So essentially, the wine and the oil are marked here. And this is very interesting because in Revelation chapter 6, verse 6, a command is given where the oil and the wine shall not be harmed. So is God signifying now that the protection of the oil and the wine is about to begin because Daniel's 70th week is about to begin? Hmm. Now, the next thing we noticed about the eclipse is the X formed on April 8th is right next to the partition in the United States called the Mississippi River. And if you look down below at the temple, that same X is right next to the partition that separates the outer court from the inner court. Well, this is pretty obvious. The veil of this temple ripped when Jesus died on the cross. We see that in Matthew 27, verse 51. And folks, this veil was thick. It's not like a t-shirt where it could just easily rip. In order to tear this thing, you would need an extremely sharp knife and a lot of force to tear it, or a chainsaw or something like that. But be it as it may, that veil ripped. Now, what does that mean for the veil here, the partition here we see in America with the Mississippi River? Well, the Mississippi River runs right along the New Madrid fault line. And just like that veil on the temple, the New Madrid fault line is strong, is very tough, very resilient, but not impossible to rip. It would just take a lot of force, like an extremely huge earthquake from the resurrection event. 
and the Mississippi River will rip along with that fault line from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to Lake Michigan. Just like the earthquake that took place when the veil of the temple ripped. See the parallels? And since America is the continent leading the way to divide the land of Israel up, that can only mean that the continent of the United States will be divided up as well. And of course, you've seen on the marine maps indicating that our military, our government, the globalists, all those in the higher ups know that this day is coming even the fallen angels. And you can see it on this map right here. The United States government has moved most of its equipment out of Washington, D.C., and they have divided it between two separate locations, one location in Atlanta, the other location in Denver, because they know this nation is about to be geographically divided. So they're getting ready. They're going to have a West government and an East government. And when things really start to get hairy, Congress shuts down, they go on vacation, but they actually retreat to these two locations. This is why Washington, D.C. has become a ghost town for the most part. Now, folks, this completes our study on this. If you see things on here that I did not talk about, please comment. Perhaps maybe we could put together another report covering what we missed here. Or if you want to make your own video, please send me a link. I love to watch it. And folks, please hit that like button on the way out. Helps us out with the algorithm, gets the word out. And hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content that we have coming out. May God bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished. Amen. Amen.